so I'm here socially distancing in Canada, and uh, while I'm hanging out, then I thought that I would tell some old travel stories to kind of fill the void while I'm not traveling. So the last video that I made was talking about my first trip to Europe when I was uh, 18 years old in the summer of 1990, and I thought that I would fill in the gaps leading up to this story of hitchhiking through Death Valley. Now, uh, Death Valley is considered to be the hottest place in North America, but uh, this uh, story does not involve extreme heat, quite the opposite. It actually involves a snowstorm, but I'll get to that in just a second. So that uh, trip to Europe ended in August of 1990, and I came back from there, and I had applied to one university, which was the University of Alaska in Fairbanks, in uh, central Alaska. And so I ended up going to university in Alaska for uh, two years. I actually transferred the second uh, year to University of Alaska Southeast in Juneau, and I spent the um, two summers uh, going to uh, Denali National Park and working there, and coincidentally that was uh, summer of 1992, the second summer, which was the same year that Chris McCandless was uh, there um, surviving in the wilderness in that bus. I actually hitchhiked a week behind him um, I think it was early May that I was there, and I hitchhiked from Juneau, because I was there in Juneau for that year, and had the uh, job set up in Denali Park in the interior of Alaska, and so I uh, took the ferry from Juneau up to Haines, Alaska, and then hitchhiked into Canada through British Columbia and the Yukon, and over to Denali Park, not knowing at the time that uh, Chris McCandless had just arrived um, basically at that bus and was uh, going through his you know, serious, um, you know, challenges and turmoil and everything uh, there in the Alaskan wilderness, and I actually heard about a uh, young man being found dead at the end of that summer, somewhere outside of the park, and later um, came across the uh, article in Outside Magazine, and then uh, read the book and saw the movie, and anyways, I was up there during that summer in 1992, and then uh, came back from there, and moved back to California, where I'm from, and spent a... Uh, semester of community college at Santa Rosa Junior College for one semester, then moved to Eugene, Oregon, where I had a friend that I had met at uh, the uh, place that I was working in Denali the previous summer, that summer of 1992, a uh, really uh, cool guy, Matt, who lived in Eugene, and I went up there to visit him, liked the uh, looks of the city, and so I moved up there and lived in Eugene for a year and a half with the intention of going to the University of Oregon there in Eugene, and it's kind of a whole long story of uh, why that didn't happen, but after a year and a half then I left and I went on a uh, hitchhiking adventure that would take me ultimately to uh, Texas, but this is in the course of that hitchhiking adventure. I left Eugene, I moved out of my apartment, I uh, sold my truck so that I would have some money for the road, and uh, got going, heading south in uh, Oregon, to southern Oregon, and then into California. And so I decided to go to Yosemite National Park. Yosemite is, of course, one of the, if not, you know, the number one most beautiful places in the entire world. It's just absolutely spectacular. A incredible valley with uh, just a, like, ring of uh, waterfalls coming down massive, massive cliffs, and, of course, Half Dome. The uh, El Capitan, which um, Alex Honnold climbed in the movie Free Solo and, uh, you know, without ropes, went up the entire um, face of this massive granite cliff. Now, at this time, then Alex Honnold was probably a baby or something, but uh, I was about uh, 20, let's see, 1994. This is uh, fall of 1994, and so I was 22. And so I headed for Yosemite hitchhiking. I'd been there before with family multiple times. But uh, I went there uh, planning to camp on my own and just uh, hang out and, you know, hike around the park and just enjoy the incredible natural wonders that are there, which you could spend, you know, weeks or a whole summer there, and many people do, including the rock climbers, such as Alex. And so I ended up staying at the uh, campground, I think it is called Camp 4, which is a uh, campground in which you uh, drive into the parking lot area and then... Uh, there are campsites spread out throughout the uh, trees, but you can't actually drive up to your specific spot. And then you actually end up sharing a uh, little uh, sort of designated area um, that could have multiple tents in it. And so it is a way to maximize the most number of people um, and allow a lot of people to uh, camp in this one uh, small area. And it is also very cheap. I think it was $5 a night, and I knew about this uh, campsite, and so 
I headed there, got a spot, and you know, set up my tent. And this is one of the places that uh, rock climbers will often stay. It is a real kind of uh, subculture um, destination of the rock climbers because many of them are broke and they're taking advantage of this uh, very cheap accommodation, staying in tents here. But uh, I just, uh, you know, pitched a tent and did my own thing. I didn't meet any rock climbers that I recall. I wasn't doing any rock climbing there. I just wanted to hike around and uh, get into the, the nature and everything. And so I was there for about uh, six or seven days. Had a really nice time. This was like, I think, early October. And so it was a little bit uh, uh, towards the end of the tourist season. And so it was kind of quieter. Um, but the weather was still really nice. It was warm. And I spent the week, you know, walking around, uh, hiking and um, getting up on the trails and checking out the waterfalls and stuff like that. Just uh, catching the buses around or maybe did a little bit of uh, hitchhiking uh, in the valley as well. But just stayed in the main uh, valley area. Yosemite National Park is a, um, a large part, but the uh, Yosemite Valley is kind of where the uh, main sites are concentrated. And so I just, you know, um, hiked around in that area. Now, towards the end of the week, then the weather cooled down a little bit, and fortunately, I happened to hear the news from somebody that uh, the weather was about to cool down a whole lot more because a snowstorm was on the way. And it was coming like the next day, like when I got this news, it was like, yeah, a snowstorm is coming tomorrow, it's real, it's serious, it's gonna be big, um, and you need to get out of here, basically, unless you're prepared to you know, be stuck here in the snow for who knows how long. And I definitely wasn't uh, prepared for that. Now there wasn't very much traffic and one of the reasons was because I guess everyone else had already gotten the news that this snowstorm was coming and had already skedaddled and so the park had really uh, emptied out. And so I remember that one way or another then I got to a, a good spot to um, stop and catch a ride. Either I hiked there from the campground or else maybe I got a short little ride there. And I ended up uh, waiting there for quite a little while and finally a car stopped and it was a guy who was driving all the way to Las Vegas. And so I get in the car and uh, we start cruising and we go from the Yosemite Valley up and over Tioga Pass, which goes over the Sierra Nevada mountains and then uh, drops you off into the uh, desert of Nevada and kept on driving. I remember that we slept in Death Valley for the night. We just pulled over somewhere and um, like threw our sleeping bags out on the side of the road. I forget where the guy was from, but I feel like he was uh, not from the United States, like from Europe or something. I think he must have been on a like road trip around the West and he was just getting out of Yosemite also because of the snowstorm and decided that Las Vegas would be a good place to uh, go and experience another, you know, totally different aspect of American culture is go to Las Vegas. And so uh, we stayed in Death Valley for the night and uh, then kept on driving and he dropped me off somewhere outside of the city and I kept on hitchhiking. Ultimately then I was uh, on my way to visit a friend in uh, Austin, Texas, and I uh, tell these stories, you know, throughout the uh, 1990s, my various travels, in my two books, Following My Thumb, A Decade of Unabashed Wanderlust, and Kundalini and the Art of Being, and so I tell these stories uh, much more in depth. And so not much actually happened in the course of driving through Death Valley. I don't remember, um, you know, we didn't go on a hike or anything, we just uh, drove, maybe stopped and looked at a couple of viewpoints or something. The weather was uh, nice and cool, but it was definitely getting a bit chilly because that snowstorm was coming in and so we just you know drove on through and uh, you know made a couple of stops stayed for the night and then uh, got to Las Vegas and so it was the next day then that he dropped me off in Las Vegas and I kept on hitching and went through Arizona and then into New Mexico and I went uh, like two-thirds of the way across New Mexico and got to this town I think it was called Santa Rosa New Mexico just off of the interstate there and decided to do a uh, little desert excursion. I stayed in that town for the night in a hotel and then just decided to hike out of the town and it was you know, right on the edge of the desert and went into the desert and just spent like three days, just a totally random location off in the uh, desert there and uh, spent a few days there just uh, hanging out and um, hiking around and reading and meditating and contemplating and stuff like that and then continued from there down into Southern New Mexico and then ultimately got to Texas and visited my friend and that's the end of the story. So if you want to read more of my stories, then check the links down below to my books. And uh, there's lots of travel stories, especially in Following My Thumb, A Decade of Unabashed Wanderlust, of my various vagabond adventures throughout the 1990s, including that trip to Europe in the uh, last video, and then my various wanderings uh, around the U.S. in Alaska and Hawaii and all over the Western United States, and then 
in India, my first time to India in the fall of uh, 1999. I spent five months in 1999 and 2000 traveling all over India. So thanks for watching and more travel stories coming. See ya.